Hey folks, Dee here and welcome to this episode of Glam for the Gown, where I design a unique makeup look for a specific ballroom dress. I'll discuss how I design the look and then I'll show you how to do it yourself. Not just the eyeshadow, but also the lip and the face. And if you love fun looks like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, stay tuned afterwards where we're gonna have a little meet and greet with the dress. The dress I have here with me today is named Neon Net and it's by Designs to Shine. It's a really beautiful Latin or rhythm dress. So it's short, it's got this fun fringe, it's got this fun netting, look at all this, and it's got a really intense whoosh, color divide. And I'll talk a little bit more about the stones during uh, the review. And if you have this dress or a dress like it, you can do this look yourself or you can always bring this to your favorite makeup artist and they can do it for you. Stay tuned and let's get started. So like I said, we've got two really powerful neon colors to work with. And that's gonna be the two features of the face. But I'm gonna do this look significantly differently than I've done any other. And you'll see why. There's symmetry to it, but it's probably not the symmetry you're expecting. First, I wanna talk a little bit about color. And the big thing about this is we get to have one of my favorite things, neons. I love neon pigments. It's one of the most wonderful things just to just, oh. Let me start that over again. They're some of the most fun colors to work with. I just love them. They're UV reactive, so sometimes when you get hit with a certain type of light on the floor, like you just light up, the dresses light up, they're just fantastic, and they're so visible. And so then when you combo it with some makeup, it really just takes it all to the next level, and you can have it in any part of your face. You can have it on your lips, you can have it on your cheeks, you can have it on your eyes. I've seen people do it in eyebrows, or even there's UV reactive mascara. There's, you can, you can take it at, from zero to 11 for sure. But neon pigments are kind of fussy because of the way that they're powdered. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about blending those. So we've got this really bright blue purple and we have kind of this kaleidoscope of matching stones in different shades. We have everything ranging from blues to fuchsias, lavenders, these vitriol mediums in here, tanzanite, heliotrope, all these guys. We'll talk about those at the meet and greet. But this color, what would you say this color is? Is this green or is this yellow? This is neon yellow. It's not yellow. This is neon green. It's not green. I like to call this neon lemon lime. It's right on the border between a yellow and a green, but it really is its own color because it really doesn't match green and it really doesn't match yellow. And then some UV pigments will be this kind of electric, and some of them will be more of the kinds like those papers. And you gotta find the right one is the big thing, and that might be the trickiest part. You remember I really like the Moon Glow Cosmetics. These are the UV pigment shakers. These are great, you can get them on Amazon, you can get them through the Moon Glow website. I'm going to use a combo of these because this is definitely a neon yellow, and this is definitely a neon green, but this is our neon lemon lime. So I'm going to use both of these to create the illusion of this guy. But first I'll talk a little bit about my face. So I already did my base face makeup. I have my contour, my foundation. For blush, I used the Urban Decay Bittersweet and the Clinique. This is the Cheek Pop and this is in Cola Pop. I really like the combination of them because you have the purple of the bittersweet, but you have the depth of the cola pop with just the slightest bit of satiny shimmer in it. And so it gives it a really nice color that's not 
too close to home and is not going to look a little cartoonish, but it picks up enough of that kind of cool shape, but it's also not too bright. For highlight, I used a little bit of a combination. I used the Jeffree Star Supreme Frost in Money Honey. And so that's kind of that green and uh, sort of brown red shimmer. And then, and then I used the Anastasia Beverly Hills Moonchild palette. I really, really like this one too because it has a lot of fun colors in it. So this is holographic highlighters of not your regular golds that you might see. So I used some of the Blue Moon here. And so it's a really beautiful like lavender blue. And I used that a little bit on the top for just kind of a little highlight. I'm gonna come back and use this later on my eyes. Put my primer on. So one of the things I really love to do is I love to play with shape. And not just kind of the shape of my eye, but also continuing the shape of things in the dress design onto my eye. If you remember Painted Pose, we use some of the graphic lines on our eyes. But for this, we want to do it with color. And I want to take this purple, this beautiful purple, as it cascades upwards, I want to take it up and across. So I'm going to do this eye purple and this eye neon lemon lime. I'm not going to create an ombre effect because that can actually be pretty distracting. It's fine for an everyday look, like if you're just at work or on the street, but in a competition, it's one thing to have a distinct line between this half and that half, but to have it blended, it can almost make you look a little bit like a Picasso painting in motion, and that's not a good thing, that's not a good look, nobody wants that. So clear division, yes. Ombre, no. So for my right eye, I wanna match that really intense purple. For that, I'm gonna use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Alyssa Edwards palette. I really, really love the colors in here, but this uh, purple here is phenomenal. And I'm gonna use a little bit of the Shimmer DDC. Like always, I'm gonna start with a big fluffy brush. I'm gonna put my transition shade up underneath my brow so I can make sure to blend it in. And today, I wanna use this Urban Decay Vanilla because it has a little bit of a green tone to it it's a really warm, beautiful uh, shimmer. I'm just gonna take it. I'm gonna take this shorter, uh, medium density brush. I'm gonna take Believe. And I'm gonna pat this guy kind of on the outer corner and into my crease. I'm gonna gently blend it. I'm gonna take it out a little bit because I really want this look to have almost like that mask effect. Next, I'm gonna take this short natural hair brush and I'm gonna go into DDC here it on and this is I'm gonna take over my lid
As you can see, I'm really trying to make this outer corner go upwards to lift my eye because I have hooded eyes. And I'm bringing it down underneath just a little bit. One of my other favorite really pigmented eyeshadow brands is Urban Decay. Again, we use that as the transition shade, but they have a ton of other colors too, and they really specialize in purples, and they have a zillion different purples, and I want to use a couple of these guys here. These are singles just in one of the palettes that they sell. You can see they have all the names on the back. I want to take some of this guy. This is Asphyxia. Now I want to take it on my inner corner and a little bit onto my lid. What this is doing is it's mimicking a lot of these lighter, more blue toned stones such as the Tanzanite. Last for these shadows, I'm going to take a little bit of this guy. His name is Palor. He's kind of a gray purple. He's going right on the inner corner. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I want to take that Moonchild palette. Pop back into that blue moon. Inner corner. Up high. How <laughs> oh, fun. Mm -mm -mm. You should just leave it like this. Just like this. Looks like I have one really big eye and one really tiny eye. Now we're gonna move on to those neon pigments. I'm gonna do this eye with the lemon lime. And just as how we want something lighter in the inner corner and darker in the outer corner, I mean, lighter and darker is a little bit of a toss up at this point, but I'm gonna do the green on the outside and the neon yellow on the inside. Ugh, oh, it's so bright. I'm just gonna take a flat brush and I'm gonna pat it in first and then I'll blend it out. If you're trying to do a look like this and you have darker skin, I really recommend at that point using the white primer because the white primer is going to give you a much more solid base and it's also going to adhere to the pigments much more strongly. And so with that white base, you're gonna get a lot more color payoff. Whereas when you're a little bit fairer skin or you know your spray tan isn't as deep or however you wanna do it, you'll already have a little bit more brighter of a base to put it on. But the thing is, the contrast against the rest of the face isn't as much. So if you use that white primer on deep skin, oh my gosh, it'll be amazing. Don't worry, if it looks a little strange and a little too asymmetric, there's still a couple tricks I have up my sleeve that you're gonna it's gonna even it out a lot. 
So I took the neon yellow and I put a little bit in the corner and then it's mostly this neon green sort of blended in. Make sure you cap your pigments. Honestly, I think spilling neon pigments is way worse than spilling glitter because at least glitter you can pick it up with tape or something like that, whereas the neon pigments, they just get everywhere and they're so fine, they get embedded into grains of wood. We're gonna do a little inner corner highlight and we're gonna use the Moonchild palette again and we're gonna use Lucky Clover. It's funny, what I'm seeing in my mirror is on this side my green highlight really pops and on this side the purple blue highlight really pops that's so much fun okay now that we look like a complete weirdo like some harley quinn stuff going on so i'm going to do underneath my eyes first and i want to line my water line so this is a time when we are going to do black graphic liner all the way around we're going to use our inglot with the dura line like we did in a previous video but the reason I want to do that strong black liner is this. This whole section is this black netting. And because it's so powerful against that neon lemon lime, it's going to look really great on the eye. And this is going to be what's really going to even the look out. So I'm just going to take my Fenty stick here. in black and I'm gonna line my bottom waterline on both eyes if you feel like you want to set it set it with the blackest black and now I'm gonna do my winged eyeliner on the top and I'm gonna use the Inglot gel liner and the Dura line all it takes is a little drop boop, and a little liner brush. One of the reasons I really prefer to use the gel liner on a neon pigment is because, like I said, the neon pigments are so finely powdered. They have to be. They absorb any kind of liquid. And so if you use a regular pen or brush liner, it's going to absorb all of that ink very, very, very quickly. And so you end up with not a lot of color payoff and you get your brush and liner really dirty. So now you can see how that graphic liner sort of evens things out a little bit. It'll even out even more once I put lashes on. And now we're gonna work with some fun neon glitters. On my left eye, I'm going to use Lemon Tart and Green Machine by Lit. Same thing as I did with the pigments is I'm gonna start with the green in the outer corner and I'm gonna blend the yellow into it. There you go. Now you have a lid filled with glitter. One of the greatest joys is when you blend your glitter perfectly. And it looks so good. On the purple side, I'm gonna use Boogie Wonderland and Disco Diva. Boogie Wonderland is gonna pull out that Tanzanite, it's gonna pull out the Province Lavender, and Disco Diva is gonna pull out the Heliotrope, 
and some of the other fuchsia and blue colors. On this eye, I'm gonna start with the lighter glitter and blend it outwards and then put the darker in and blend it in. So good! Oh, I love it so much! It's fun being excited and trying not to make faces <laughs> while you're trying to put your stupid glitter on. That's that. I'm gonna pop on some brows, lashes, and um, we'll talk about lip colors. See, now that we have the lashes on, these big black flared lashes, and you know, the longer the better, and kind of the crosshatch of the lashes really helps mimic this mess shape. So that's super fun. I feel like you can't not wear a purple lip with this. It just, lavender's not gonna work. Fuchsia's gonna look weird. And for a chill lip, any, any of the other colors just isn't gonna work. You can't not wear a purple lip with this. You just can't. You can't. If glitter is rhinestones for the eyes, are lashes fringe for the eyes? Anyhow, considering the type of sparkle that there is throughout here, I really think we should have a multi-dimensional purple lip. Something that's too flat is going to look a little strange. So I think no matter what we choose, we're gonna to have to have something that has sparkle or dimension or something that's just not super flat. So for a chill lip, and even the chill lip is gonna be somewhat adventurous for this, but I mean, look what we have on our face, is I'm going to recommend Voodoo by Urban Decay. It's not black, don't worry. It's a deep purple, but it has a holographic sparkle in it. I'm actually using a very gentle hand with the lip bullet. So see, it's deep, but it's not too crazy. It's still definitely purple, but it really just looks like a really deep wine lip color with some purple glitter in it. You can always add some more purple glitter of a little bit lighter of a color if you wanted. Say like in Boogie Wonderland, just a very gentle tapping it on the lip. This would work really nicely. So for the adventurous lip, I'm gonna use a very bold liquid lip. So this is the Jeffree Star I'm Royalty Velour Liquid Lip. This is the mini version that came in the Pride box, but I believe this is for individual sale as well. And I'm gonna put that on, and then I'm gonna use this Diamond Crusher on top of it. These are by Lime Crime. I use them in my basic lip video. This one is Gemini, and so it has a purple base with some fuchsia in it but it also has a little bit of like a green holographic in it so it's perfect it'll be pretty intense but it'll be a little bit lighter of an intensity so actually depending on what you like the chill lip and the adventurous lip might be just alternatives
The one caution I do have about purple lips is your teeth better be really white or they can look kind of yellow. I'm very lucky that mine is still pretty white. But the contrast of the purple can tend to bring out a little bit of yellow. So now I'm gonna use my Diamond Crusher. So the reason I would consider this one a little bit more adventurous is it has some more blue tones in it. Typically anything that is super yellow, green, or blue is kind of a risky lip color. And so, you know, we've seen a couple with some of these other dresses, lip colors that when they're very gold and they're very yellow, gold can be okay. It can be understandable, I suppose because skin has golden undertones, but green is not a color that you find on lips. Even though olive is an undertone, you're not gonna find green lips. Same with blue. Purple, because it still has that red and richness and it's pink, which is, you know, it's blood flowing in the skin. Even really, really deep skin tones have red undertones a lot of times. So those are understandable, but green, blue, and sometimes yellow can be eh. So that's why this I would consider a little bit more adventurous. My pick. You want a treat? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that little face. Look at that little bitty face. Such a sweet baby. Yes. And again, one of the other things that's really fun about this look is even from the back, you see that it's kind of a half and half sort of design where you have the deeper tones. So you have like your black, you have your purple on this side, and then you have the neon green on this side. So the makeup matches in a way and it's symmetrical, but it's just not the symmetry that we're used to. So. Welcome to the meet and greet. We have Neon Net by Designs to Shine. And let's talk a little bit about structure first. I really love this super subtle neckline. Whether you feel like you're small on top, big on top, this very subtle neckline is gonna look really good on you. It's gonna look good on any lady. And what's really fun is these big chunky stones. If you feel like you're really small on top, this is gonna draw a little bit more attention there. And so it'll give you a little bit of volume if you're looking for a little bit more. This intense color divide, as we see, it's gonna slim you a lot. It's gonna make you look a lot longer and it's gonna make you look a little bit taller. So if you feel like you're really petite, really short, or you feel like maybe your legs aren't super long, or, you have, or even if you have a very short torso, this is gonna make you look a lot longer and a lot more vertical. The netting is really, really beautiful because it's going to bounce. And so it moves independently of the bodysuit. I love this kind of netting. I don't know if it came stoned or if Designs to Shine did it themselves. It wouldn't surprise me if they did. They put so much detail into this. But this with some of the fringe on it, it's gonna bounce and it's gonna have its own motion. So these rhinestones are gonna slip around and move, which is gonna be really, really cool to show a lot of body action. So maybe that's what you're going for. If your dancing has taken a turn to where you wanna accentuate that, this might be a really great choice. One of the other things that this netting is going to do is say you have a couple, you know, bulges or lumps you here and there and you're not happy about it, this type of netting over this bodysuit will hide it. It creates kind of a distracting pattern, almost like camouflage in a way. And so it'll hide if you have anything that you want to hide, really. It'll be great for that. And this back being this tight, 
and not super open. If you feel like you have back rolls or loose skin, this is gonna help keep it in there and it's gonna hide it and it'll still show off any nice back and shoulder action that you have. All right guys, well that's it for today. I wanna to say thank you so much to Brent Mills for providing the music for my channel. Links to his Music Mill software and ballroom playlist are down in the description. Thanks so much to Designs to Shine for this wonderful collaboration. Thanks to Carly for all of her editing and tech help. And most of all, thank you guys for watching. It means so much to me and I love making these videos. Remember, if you wanna see a certain dress, get its own makeup look, just put a link to it down in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, come back soon to get your daily dose of vitamin D. It's good for you. Have a wonderful day, folks. See you next time.